Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing a piece of history. Not many brands of speakers last 50 years, but PSB, founded in 1972 by Paul Button, is celebrating their 50 years in existence with a 50, an 50 anniversary speaker. It's a reimagining, a reworking, a redesign of their first speaker. One that was built and engineered with um, collaboration with the National Research Institute in Canada. In fact, that institute is the foundation of why Canada today is such a powerhouse in uh, speaker manufacturing and production. These speakers represent some of the best implementation of 50 years, five decades of experience, wisdom and intellect in the audio industry. So it's wonderful that I get to share these speakers with you today. Okay, so these speakers are shipped in pairs and it is worth noting before we have a good look that they're marked left and right as the uh, mid-range and base configuration is, uh, well the tweeter is offset towards the centre um, for the left and right pairing. Uh, it does mean of course depending on how you might set them up, you swap them around depending on what you would like to do and with that tune them in your room. But because they are identical as far as what we're going to see, we're just going to concentrate on one. Opening, well okay, so first looking at the box, uh, they're called the Passive 50. The first speaker uh, PSB created, manufactured for consumer production, was the Passive. Now, again, the 50, emulating their 50 years and the 50 years of R&D and research that have gone into these. They're a retro speaker, and that's part of the reimagining that I was speaking of. There's some cool designs as we've in, uh, introduced a few more little sort of colour and so on with the packaging. We've got Design in Canada, and these to hit the very, very aggressive price point that these have, they're made in China. On one end, as we alluded to, we've got scannable information associated with the model and serial number, uh, and then the uh, left and right indication, and the implication of one of two and two of two that are important when you're shipping them. In the box, they're not very tall, and there's no other uh, stickers or other things on the box itself. Opening these is pretty straightforward. They're sellotaped closed. So packing tape like anything, it's relatively straightforward as far as just sort of nicking them and getting in. Leaning them forward and just having a quick look at them before we drill in, uh, the, the speaker itself is supported in place with some closed cell foam. The first central piece is relatively straightforward to get rid of quickly. And there's another piece at one end. Now, as you carefully lift that out, we reveal the fact that although these are stand mount speakers and typically speakers, uh, stand mount speakers don't come with stands, these do. So just grabbing that and putting it off to one side for a moment, we see some of the other uh, inserts and cutouts in the packaging to support some of the accessories. So we'll pause and we'll grab some of those accessories out. Um, each one is protected in one of those sort of uh, semi-soft polished cloth bags. We see the base of the speaker stand. The first piece that I put off to one side is the foot. Okay, so this being the bottom and this being the top. Then we see an angled block, a quite weighty piece at this point actually. And this is obviously the part between the top and the bottom of the stand itself. Now it's all pre-tapped with big heavy uh, loaded screw locations ready to go. And then there is a, a Ziploc bag with all sorts of accessories in it. There's an Allen key for the purposes of um, uh, putting everything together. There's some rubber, look, as always, hang around for some photographs. I'll take some close up of all these sorts of accessories. There's hex bolts, there's uh, screws, and the Allen key to help put it together. 
the uh, closed cell foam at the other end is just a lot more modest as far as that goes because of course it's not holding any of the or any of the accessories. Now at this point lifting the speaker out is relatively straightforward. It's not very heavy because of course it's not a very big speaker. It's a large bookshelf for a large sort of stand mount uh, so it's not colossal in its weight. You see the other half of the uh, packaging now in the box and it's relatively straightforward to get rid of it. Spinning it around there's an oversized plastic bag held close with some cello tape and then in that a polished cloth bag again taped closed. Looking at the speaker and its finish as I tip it forward for a moment we see this beautiful retro walnut wood grain it's absolutely stunning with a small texture to it. Carefully rolling it around, we get the opportunity to lift the plastic bag off and then that uh, polish cloth bag as well. Now taped to the bag there's desiccant for moisture absorption and another one for anti-mould for the cardboard and other things. Okay. So, looking at it again, you see the retro design, the reimagining that PSB have done. Don't get me wrong, the retro design does not imply retro performance. It features a really modern titanium 1 inch dome tweeter, a 6.5 inch mid bass driver uh, incorporated with an 8 inch passive radiator. Now, it means that the speaker requires no port as we briefly sort of have a look around it. And it means the performance is absolutely stunning and very, very practical for any listening environment. A port can often influence a speaker's positioning in a room, and being able to eliminate a port is one of the things that can make this speaker truly acceptable in a living space. Uh, now, they're about 80, 90 dB efficient, and they're a couple of hundred watts. So from a frequency, uh, sorry, from a deliverable uh, response and range, it's pretty easy to keep these under control. Touching on that retro design, there's sort of a light brown uh, woven grill with the PSB logo again in its retro design. What we're seeing at the bottom, and again hang around for some close-ups, I'll take all of these, is a tab and that is the pull tab utilized to be able to remove the speaker's magnetic grill. Looking at it we see an incorporation of all sorts of modern techniques. The neodymium magnets used with a felt pad to ensure that there's no opportunity for it to scratch the front. Then we see uh, the reinforcement that is utilised in these sort of uh, shapes to ensure that the uh, grill will sit flat and flush and not move with, uh, with the dynamics of the drivers. We also see, and again, a very subtle, and, and please hang around, we see a tapering of the grill itself um, so that the uh, disbursement of the frequencies is much more managed in the, in the room. We also see an acoustically transparent patch cut away of course to ensure that its frequencies aren't influenced too much through the grill itself. Now looking at the speaker the first thing that you'll see and again it's a charming little uh, part of this retro design we see this big felt pad. Now this is to influence the reflection directly off the cabinet. With any of these sort of um, retro designs the cabinets can be quite wide and flat surfaces aren't really very good from a reflection perspective for the tweeter. So PF, PSB have dived right into that and utilised a felt pad to manage that reflection. Again with the offset tweeter we expect to see the other one of course with the um, offset in the opposite direction. We see a protective cover over the dome and a few exposed hex bolts and screws. Now this is a six and a half inch mid-range driver and it doesn't look special but its performance is prestigious and that's the important element of the speaker. It's designed to look kind of kind of subtle, kind of no longer shouty yet leave its performance breathtaking. Beneath it is the 8-inch uh, passive radiator that I implied and all beautifully designed as far as that appeal to be able to utilize the speaker whether it be with the grill on or off. Spinning it around we see again its implication of height and width. It's not a big speaker and with that very very easy to fit in a home. The back of it we also see an absence of seams and other things that are often classic with some of these things. So they've made a real effort as far as uh, manufacturing. 
uh, no expense spared as far as their design to ensure that the speakers do look absolutely lovely and very much in keeping with what you would have expected 50 years ago. Again an emulation and the uh, 50th anniversary um, panel at the back which is protected with a little bit of a sticky label. They have a, a, a by, by wire, by amp binding post, clearly delineated with red and black stoppers. And again, please hang around for the photos. Uh, it means that the performance can be improved should you choose to by utilizing a by wire cable or by amplification if you have it available. And then a simple enough scan code at the bottom uh, for its model and serial number. So there we have it, a piece of history, 50 years in the making. These new uh, PSB Passive 50s uh, bookshelf stand mount speakers unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.